like the attack that you're that your music is taking form more now, that uh, you're falling more into the ca category uh, of heavy metal. I, I had the impression with the first two albums anyway that uh, it wasn't, for me anyway, exactly heavy metal, but now it's more so in, in many ways. Well, that might be your, your own opinion. I think it's an aggressive, this new record is very aggressive, but I think Tooth and Nail, our second LP, is the most aggressive. So. A, if you you know it balances out you never know what kind of record it just depends what we have for material and if it's good or not and we don't really care if it's aggressive or non-aggressive as long as the songs are, that we feel are good you know we don't there's so many writers in the band there's a lot of style a lot of styles that can come from the songs a lot of songs don't fit the band that we don't use so we didn't write a record saying we're gonna be heavy metal this time maybe one guy in the band thought that but <laughs> yeah we never said let's make just a heavy metal what sort of stuff do you or have you listened to yourselves well you know I personally like uh, rock and roll, you know, I, I like... Uh, what about your classical side, too, and you're listening yeah, to Wyndham Hill? And I like my Wyndham Hill records, you know, Wyndham Hill is a record company in America that has uh, a lot of guitar players with flutes and violins. I like Rachmaninoff, you know, the classical uh, composers, but uh, in fact, I've written two songs uh, with Doc and that I st actually stole musical yeah. ideas from Rachmaninoff. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> I'm not telling you, Rock Ma's dead, so he can't get it. Oh, okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> but, uh, no you know, but then again, I like Motorhead. You know, I've always was a big Motorhead fan, and I like uh, you know, Iron Maiden. I like Saxon. Early, early Saxon I was really fond of. And the European band, like Scorpions and stuff like that, except. But it's, so it's, I'm kind of schizophrenic, you know, as a singer. You know, I, I like the classical side. You know, I like to sing the more vocals, like Lost Behind the Wall is more of a, a flavor of Dio. You know, it's got the uh, very operatic vocal style that I do. And then again, I like to do the Stand in the Shadows, which is more very st straightforward, you know, a little bit of, almost a little bit of ACDC, you know. Talking of Standing in the Shadows, maybe we should talk a little bit about some of the songs on the album, Back to the Attack. Well, standing in the Shadows, for example. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about what that song's all about? It's, it's about hypocrites. You know, it's about the uh, Jim Bakers. I'm sure you heard of them in America. Tammy Bakers, uh, Jerry Falwells, uh, Jimmy Swaggerts. They... They go on television and they say, you know, you're a sinner, you're all sinners, you have to pay this much money to buy a ticket to heaven, or you're going to hell if you don't pay me this much amount of money, this other guy, uh, you know, so what we said was, these are the kind of guys that said, you're a sinner, you're a pervert, you're into pornography, and then and you're all going to hell, and then he walks away from the church, gets in his car, drives down and gets himself a prostitute, <laughs> you know, he's a hypocrite, you know, and that's what it is, standing in the shadows, the words are basically, uh, for his crime, they showed no pity, even though he'd done the same. They had done the same, you know? It's, on TV, I noticed once, what really came from a song was that this guy was in there for pornography, right? We had this problem with the children molestation case, and the whole jury was saying, uh, you know, he's put him to prison, you know? And we saw the videotape, it was really horrible. Let's watch it again. <laughs> you know, it's like, we have to watch slow motion. They spent eight hours watching the pornography tape of this man, and they said it was absolutely disgusting, and they need to go two more days to watch it some more. I said, oh, I see. You have to watch it for four days to see how bad it is. He never There's uh, obviously for us a very interesting connection, a certain Nor Norwegian connection, is that right? Yeah, my uh, parents are Norwegian, and my father. And he's, he's, my father's parents were from Oslo. Now, tell me what the real meaning is, ready? Devil's, Devil's organization killing kids every night. Every night, <laughs> every night or even now. So we, I just made... That's for the PMRC. <laughs> you know, they're so stupid, you know? What's docking mean? What's docking mean? It's some satanic thing for the devil. Do you know any Norwegian? Uh, yeah, I think a uh, thousand francs. Thanks. I was at, uh, I don't remember it. I forgot. Tusentak. That's it. Tusentak. Yeah, my parents don't didn't speak it to me as a child. No. They said, Don, take the garbage out. They said, take the garbage. Eat your fish. I don't like fish. You're a good Norwegian boy. Eat the fish. <laughs> Have your sardines and kippers and salmon. <laughs> but I want a hamburger. <laughs> my father, he's a fisherman. And he loves us to loves to fish on his boat. And he loves yeah. fish. His idea of fishing is this. <laughs> <laughs> on the boat. <laughs> He's a good Norwegian fisherman, drinking with a, with a fishing boat. Well, that's, that's fishing. Very anyway, Norwegian, right? yeah. <laughs> with a beard, he has a very full beard. <laughs> and I said, no, Dad, I want to be a musician. So he said, no, eat your fish. <laughs> Drink your fish. Your no, no. Yeah, I, I, he wanted me to write songs about kippers and stuff and sardines. <laughs> So I said, no, no, I can't do it, you know. But I am Norwegian. I mean, you should have seen me two days ago. I had a full beard. I shaved my beard. Big Viking helmet. Oh, yeah, big, big horns. Also. 
Have you been to Norway at all? Yeah, we just came from uh, Oslo, my hometown, and we were in Malmo and all East West in Sweden. But we were in uh, we were in Norway. Just Oslo, right? It was great. It was you know? great. I went and saw the Viking ships and. Uh, we went to a bar and uh, bought all the champagne in the bar and got the whole town drunk. Yeah, it was fantastic. They, they had to stop the bar because they ran out of alcohol. They said, you guys, go home, go home. <laughs> At the end of the night, they gave us drinks for free. They said, we feel so bad, you spent so much money, we're going to give it to you for free now. Well, I hope you realize what that means in this country, getting drinks for free. What's the, that mean? So the cost of things. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, well, you should see our bill. <laughs> it, was, it was very believe expensive. Me. I couldn't believe it to buy a bottle of champagne for $100. Mm. And, uh, oh, it was more than that. <laughs> it was more than that. At least. $150. So been going to? But he, he makes famous for spending a lot of money. He doesn't, we don't care about money. I mean, what are you going to do with it? You spend it. That's what it's for. If I'm 80 years old, oh, I have $5 million. It's not going to, it's not worth anything. Yeah, it'd you know? be great to die and have be $10 overdrawn on your bank account. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's good to leave the world owing money. <laughs>